welcome back. The focus is on the state of the youth this month and we go to the youth debate in the National Assembly. The first speaker was Mamoloko Kumai of the ANC who said the biggest problem facing the country was unemployment, inequality and poverty. Ms. Kubai said young people in South Africa deserved better than what they were getting. We want permanent solution to challenge that they, to the challenges that are, they are faced. As I conclude, honourable members, I would like to raise my concern about leaders who go around and instigate violence by saying young people must rise like the, the so-called Arab Spring. My understanding is that during the Arab Spring, the so-called Arab Spring, there was violence and people died. I don't understand how you can take an inspiration from a process which ends up with citizens citizens losing their lives. We need to condemn this with all its costs. Jordan Hill Lewis of the Democratic Alliance said millions of young South Africans felt they still lived under a government that had turned its back on them. He warned that today's youth could turn its back on the government. Nearly four decades ago, a generation of youth rose up and acted and began a movement that eventually would topple the government. And the same will happen again if this government continues to turn its gaze from the many ordinary people who are the face of unemployment in South Africa. Mr. Hill Lewis then showed the House a series of photographs of young people, all of them unemployed. Bongani Montlane, 27 years old, unemployed. Aubrey Jankis, 21 years old, unemployed. Njabuli Sijili, 21 years old, unemployed. You've got a job, honorable member, don't laugh at them. Andre, Andre Gates, 23, unemployed. And Shamina uh, Vala, honorable, honorable 30 years Deputy old, Speaker. unemployed. This is that, the face of unemployment. Of, uh, honorable Hilluis, can you just take a seat? Is that a point of order? Is, is it parliamentary to say don't love a dem? Because yes. the word dem is like damn it. I said don't laugh, honorable member, you've got a job. These are the faces of unemployment in South Africa today, Deputy Speaker. When the DA asked unemployed youth to send us their photos, we got hundreds of replies in minutes. And there are roughly 7 million more photos like this in South Africa today. All of them are watching you. All of them are waiting. But they won't wait much longer. If this government does not wake up to the reality of youth unemployment today and begin to act on it immediately and with the necessary urgency, they too will find themselves at the mercy of a generation that is fed up, ignored, marginalized and angry there were more calls for finding solutions to challenges uh, the youth were facing we pick up on the address of mr nababanga of the congress of the people who said the ownership of wealth must be changed but not the way proposed by the anc youth league the lives of black majority must change and this we must do in solidarity black and white all youths of our country black and white must hold hands and fight this divide in one voice However, the approach of the ANC Youth League on economic matters is foreign in our democracy and does not represent the collective thinking of the youth of South Africa. This is divergence from O.R. Stambo's call for a shared vision in building a non-racial, non-sexy South Africa. The ANC Youth League message is racist and represents the same divisive attitude of Hendrik Fervoort. The challenge of youth unemployment I will not only attribute to the apartheid regime, but also to ANC government. The ANC is responsible for today's bad policies, amongst those lack of clear education policy vision and inconsistency of policy choices. The private sector is lazy and comfortable with business as usual. No investment in economies of the future, youth innovation. They do not support good business initiatives from the youth. South Af young South Africans today are struggling to get by. Patience is fast dwindling, and hope is fast wearing thin. Education must be improved, teachers capacitated, schools must be fully resourced, skills development must be a priority. 
the youth wage subsidy must be implemented now. The sitters must get their act together, labor laws need to be relaxed, and FETs must be refurbished such that they become institutions of choice, not circumstance. Let us put an end to this foolish debate on nationalization. Colleges of education must be reopened, and importantly, jobs, 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 and more jobs must be created. Every South African has to, at the very least, be given an education that grants them an opportunity to live out their dreams and ideals. In my discussions with the youth of today, I still see echoes of that idealism and the energy and determination to make this a country that works for all. Unfortunately, though, that idealism is in too many instances clouded with a sense of anger and betrayal that they are not being given the education and opportunities to live productive lives. Practical solutions like the youth wage subsidy, which can provide a much needed step up, are thwarted by vested interest while the majority of our youth remain locked out of the job market. The Deputy President yesterday referred to the situation in the Mbashi municipality as tragic. I've worked in that municipality and I've seen firsthand how children with all the potential and promise in the world are being denied anything resembling a quality education. Many of these children come out of grade 7, not even being able to read and write, and have to suffer the indignity of teachers only coming to school for three days of the week. We cannot easily overcome youth poverty without investing heavily in human capital development. Without investment in quality education, very few young people will be able to open businesses and create job opportunities for our people in this country. In our efforts to address youth challenges, we also need to do away with the culture of materialism, which celebrates instant success and ineptitude. Too often, we see the rise of politically connected individuals become instant millionaires. Now, these overnight millionaires achieve this without any contribution to the GDP of the country. In South Africa, only 11.2% of the persons aged 20 years and older have tertiary qualification as opposed to 26.2% with grade 12 and 37.5% with some secondary education. This poses a challenge to government to expand post-school education in order to enable the majority of those in grade 12 to access higher education in order to improve their employability prospects. It's time for a commercial break. A view from the house will continue in a moment. Don't go away.